Good morning, everybody, and welcome to At World's Edge, the fantasy lore podcast. I was making a video about Malachi, uh, Malachi McKyson in honor of uh, Total War Th Warhammer 3's upcoming uh, Thrones of Decay DLC, and I realized that, um, well, he's can, uh, he's a bit of a uh, a bit of a braggart, and one of his most famous inventions, the thr the uh, Thunder Barge. Um, is not actually technically his own invention. So we're going to be talking today about several about the Thunder Barge itself as a uh, as a concept, as well as the and the uh, history of dwarven airships. Uh, this will be pretty narrow scope. We're not going to be talking about the entirety of the dwarf air force um, or the history of the sky bridges or anything like that. We're just going to be looking at the progression of the invention of dwarven airships and. Um, you can judge for yourself if you think that Malachi McKyson uh, does indeed deserve the title of uh, or the acc uh, accolade for inventing the Thunder Barge. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. And thank you very much for tuning in. The Thunder Barge is a uh, essentially an airship, um, like a, uh, like the Pridwin from Fallout or the. Uh, floating um, the floating aircraft carrier from Marvel. It's a large platform by which to uh, to dispatch weaponry from the sky. Uh, in the current setting, the being uh, Warhammer fantasy, it is in, it's uh, portrayed as like a zeppelin. But the first uh, dwarven airships actually were not. Uh, the very first model, as it presented by he Heglin Copperfist, all the way back in um, minus 2005 Imperial Calendar, at um, Bar was a uh, was essentially more like a Da Vincian uh, design. And uh, I'm going to apologize for the artwork in advance because this is uh, drawn by me. And uh, as we have no examples of what Heglin's initial design actually looked like, um, but essentially instead of any kind of uh, lighter than air travel. The um, device used perpetual motion windmills, so not even very powerful windmills, um, but consistent pressure from above and behind uh, focused into sails in order to push the, um, the, the creation up into the sky and then forward. Um, the, these multiple sails would allow for the crew, which was about which was designed for five people um, in addition to their cargo, to adjust the the lift, uh, the pitch, and the direction of the of the uh, vessel as it went forward. Again, this was not a weapon of war. This was a prototype. But even had it been in produ production, this was designed to be a trading vessel carrying about 20 barrels uh, in its cargo. Uh, in its cargo hold, which would have made it an uh, an awesome uh, uh, alternative to the dangerous overland routes through the uh, the various mountain holds, though it's debatable whether or not it would have been superior to using the uh, the underway. In any case, uh, Heglin Copperfist's first attempt uh, ended in failure as his Sky Skierzan Harbark, which was the um, which is what he was calling these uh, vehicles, literally sky boats. Um, crashed into the valley uh, underneath of, or in the north of Barakvar, uh, ending that particular incarnation, um, at least for a couple of decades. Thankfully for us, though, he was not done inventing, and his ver next version of the Skyzen Harbark um, was launched about 30 years later, uh, actually really close to 40 years later, again from Barakvar. Um, you'll note Barakvar is not traditionally associated with innovation in today's setting. In fact, it was, um, in fact, it's, uh, that would be Zuthbar, which we'll talk about in a moment. But Barakvar at the time was one of the three contenders, along with Karak Eight Peaks and Karaza Karak, for leadership of the Dwarven Realms, and Barakvar being the far, by far the most innovative technologically of those three. Um, so that's where, that's why we're seeing so much of Barakvar from Heglin and Copperfist. This design was much, much a more warlike, and also b more, uh, more sturdy. This uh, during this period, this was the War of the Beard, so we have a lot more of a military focus. There was no trade at this point. Uh, trade with the elves had dried up, and trade with with you know men didn't exist. Trade with other dwarf holds did exist, but only underground because the elves controlled the sky with their dragons and the. Um, you know, it was too dangerous to travel above ground. Most dwarven armies are below. So this this uh, this 
uh, airship called the named the Nadri's Retribution was part of a fleet of of uh, seven such ships of various sizes, but this is the standard size we're presenting. Um, that were designed to win back the skies for the dwarves and take on dragons. To that end, the entire ship was covered with fire-resistant animal skins and uh, fire-resistant runes. Um, the uh, ball itself is fully filled with, um, is a single chamber filled with lighter than uh, air gases, and armament is provided by bolt throwers that are fully articulated, um, they can, meaning they can move from side to side and have a full 360 range of motion there, and they can go up and down, but they don't have a full um a full view uh a few a full elevation so they can't shoot above you'll notice there's nothing on top of the balloon so the the top and below were both vulnerable still what this uh design also did was it made use of an experimental um uh, incendiary called tharzar or th uh, thunder um thunder fire which was unfortunately while it was uh, extremely deadly it was essentially a super weapon uh, it caused the it caused a flame which, in addition to catching anything on fire, even metals, would literally eat the uh, organic components of a of something that it hit, such as a dragon, with horrific results. Um, while the dwarves, um, it's possible this was a dwarven invention from Kirak Zorn. We don't really know, being supplied by a uh, uh, a Zinchin demon prince, as it was, who was attempting to use this to destabilize the dwarven realms in retribution for his losses uh, during the first invasion of chaos. Um, but uh, as it stood, this was the weapon that was on board. It was used to great effect to kill dragons. Um, two dragons would fall during this battle, which was more than any other time during the war. However, in uh, on balance, because it was such a powerful weapon, it destroyed not only half the airship fleet, more or less, but also the entire supporting army on the ground, and also essentially an entire dwarven hold was blown open by this super weapon. Um, after which, there would be no more experiments with Thazar, at least not that we are uh, seeing in the lore. There are no dwarven warp fire weapons. In any case, after that, um, after that disaster, the Battle of Khazad Thar. The, this dwarven airship design was not only uh, retired, but further designs were, further um, innovations were um, were ended. Uh, the Zinchin prince involved that I mentioned earlier did uh, assassinate the remain the uh, engineer Heglin Copperfist, and then uh, brutally destroyed uh, Barak Var, knocking them out of the war and also putting a final nail in the coffin on dwarven innovation. In fact, it won't be another 2,500 years, uh, actually not even 2,000, it'll be almost uh, 4,500 years before we see Thunder Barges again in the lore. And this is the Wrath of Thunder. Um, Sven Hassel, Hasselfrapp launched this in the, uh, at, at, we believe sometime in the 2,500s. Um, we don't have an exact number there, but it does say in the lore that it's been extremely active. Um, it is like its uh, like its ancient predecessor. It is filled with uh, fire resistant. Um, is covered with fire resistant animal skins and runes of protection, and also lighter than air gases. It is armed with five organ guns and their payload of thunder of uh, thunder bombs, so it can attack to the sides and also to the bottom. Um, it also carries, at least from what we're seeing in both the uh, in both game and also in the imagery, it carries a full complement of warriors, which it it looks like are used in the same way that marines on a boat were um, to perform boarding actions. Um, this particular uh, type of thunder barge we don't know much about, except that it was considered dangerously experimental. It was launched from Zufbar, which, as we talked about in the modern age, is the center of Dwarven um, of the Dwarven Engineers Guild and innovation. Barak Varg, at this point, is no longer uh, has that reputation. It's really more of a uh, of a commercial type of thing. Um, but this one we only see in the lore a couple of times, operating out of Zufbar and in the Southern Empire, um, which brings us to. Malachi McKyson's Spirit of Grungni. This was launched in uh, sometime after 2504. Um, as we know, it was launched after the Skaven invasion of Nuln, and it was launched in the region of Nuln. Um, Mackay, uh, Malachi McKyson, it seems, was a gray dwarf uh, or a dwarf living in the Empire working alongside Imperial engineers at the Lonely Tower. It has been seen throughout Weissenland, um, all the way up through Kislev and the dwarven, uh, the northern dwarven. Uh, realms of the world's edge mountains or former realms 
as they were. This design is, in, is especially innovative because it's a balloon filled with thousands of smaller balloons, which means that even if it gets attacked by, say, a dragon or physically damaged, the balloon, one balloon isn't getting punctured and exploding. It, um, you know, it has a, a great deal of resistance there. It, does, it is covered with anti-magic runes, which were able to resist even the, um, the most uh, chaotically infused areas around Karak Doom. Um, and, it, and its uh, armament is much more scattered. It has turrets and potholes both in the basket and in the uh, balloon, which have both cannon, so high bore, and organ guns, which are multiple uh, bore. It does seem smaller uh, than either uh, the Skyzen Harbark version 2 or the um, Wrath of Thunder Thunder Barge from Sven. Looking at the size comparison of the pot of the portholes in the basket as well as the um, entry, as well as the uh, viewport, it seems like this is much more of a personal transport device, and we really only see it transporting uh, Malachi, as well as Gotrek and Felix and other adventurers on there. We don't see it transporting huge amounts of cargo or, um, you know, dwarven warriors en masse. Uh, the dwarves, um, that would be pretty much the end of the uh, of the dwarven history as we know it. There's only about a decade and a half left before the end times. But fast forward millions of years or thousands of years, however long it actually ends up being in linear time, and the dwarves of that of that time period have had to leave their mountain homes and take to the skies, where we find them uh, very much perfecting the technology of their ancient mythological ancestors. And with that, I um, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, brief look into the history of dwarven airships. Um, it's a subject I've always found fascinating. I really wanted them to release a, a an official um, airship or Thunder Barge model back in eighth edition when I was playing Warhammer Fantasy, and I have my I have my hopes up um, as always that they'll re release one for uh, Warhammer the Old World, especially with dwarves coming out in the next couple of months. Um, as for where we are in the setting in the Old World, uh, this would be a little too late for us. There's no evidence at all of dwarven um, Thunder Barges or airships of any kind existing in this time period. Um, uh, being the 2300s, 2200s, but maybe I'm wrong about that, um, and I'm just not, I'm missing something from the lore, or I've just overlooked it, but you know what, um, if I have, please comment below, uh, please tell me if you liked this, if you liked the format, and um, please click like, share, and subscribe. You have a great day and a good weekend, and I will see you all next week.